Hello everyone, welcome back to Dekin Cuts. So today, we'll be taking a look at what seems to be one of the hardest IMO problems in the history of the contest. Well, at least it seems to be one of the hardest because only a total of two contestants actually scored full points on this question. And in addition, the number of contestants who got even just a positive score is in the single digits. So, the score distribution graph over here shows that an overwhelming majority of the contestants actually just got zero. Well, in fact, because of this question in that year's IMO, the highest scoring uh, person in the Olympiad that year only got 35 points out of 42. And the goal cutoff is all the way down at 25. You do not even need four problems to get a gold medal. So, this is quite an insane year. Now, what is this problem that I'm talking about? Well, it is the famous hunter and rabbit problem, which is the IMO 2017 problem number 3. So today, we'll be taking a look at this problem. And then after discussing the solution, I'll give my views on whether or not this is indeed one of the hardest IMO problems ever. And let us also take a look at what is the fate of the two contestants who solve this problem? Now, without further ado, let us take a look at this combinatorics problem. A hunter and an invisible rabbit play a game in the Euclidean plane. The rabbit's starting point A0 and the hunter's starting point B0 are the same. After n minus, ro n minus 1 rounds of the game, the rabbit is at point AN minus 1 and the hunter is at point bn minus 1. So this is just notation for the points. In the nth round of the game, three things occur in order. Firstly, the rabbit makes a move. It moves invisibly to a new point an, such that the distance between an minus 1 and an is exactly 1. Next, a tracking device will report a point pn to the hunter. The only guarantee provided by the tracking device is that the distance between pn and an is at most 1. And lastly, the hunter then moves visibly to a point bn, such that the distance between bn minus 1 and bn is exactly 1. So it's quite a mouthful, but it's very logical. Let me just summarize it. So on each turn, the rabbit moves invisibly by a distance of 1. Then a tracking device will ping where the rabbit is, except it's not exactly accurate. It's only accurate up to a distance of at most 1. And then, the hunter will decide, uh, will make a move by moving a distance of exactly one. So we are supposed to consider the following question. Is it always possible, no matter how the rabbit moves and no matter what points are reported by the tracking device, for the hunter to choose her moves so that after 10 to the 9 rounds, she can ensure that the, hunt, uh, the distance between her and the rabbit is at most 100. So, this is quite an interesting question. Uh, let us now take a look at the solution to this problem. So the solution to this problem turns out to be no, which means that we need to show the following. The hunter cannot guarantee staying within a distance of 100 after 10 to the 9 rounds. What does this mean in English? It means no matter what strategy the hunter comes up with, there is always some scenario of the rabbit moves and the tracking device points that will cause the hunter under that strategy to be at a distance of above 100 after 10 to the 9 rounds. Okay, so the hunter, whatever strategy comes up with, there's always at least one scenario that cannot she cannot cover the, that ground. So, how might we prove something like this? Well, one logical approach is to say, is that a scenario where the distance increases slightly from the current distance and the distance increase incrementally. So specifically, the distance right now might be a certain D and then maybe there's one scenario where after a certain number of rounds, the distance end up increasing between the, the hunter and the rabbit. So specifically, we are going to prove the following claim. Suppose the rabbit is at distance d greater than equal to 1 from the hunter. Then, no matter what 
strategy the hunter has, there's always at least one scenario where after N steps, uh, I'm going to let N bigger than equal to 4D here, you'll see why later. So after N steps, the hunter could be at a distance of bigger than square root D squared plus half from the rabbit. So notice that this is slightly bigger than D. So this is what I mentioned earlier on about our general approach. We are going to show that starting from a certain distance, there is some scenario that will cause the distance to increase. Yeah, so let us see how we can prove this claim. And this claim is actually not too difficult to prove as well. So suppose now that we have the rabbit at A and the hunter is at B and the distance is D. Of course, the hunter doesn't know where the rabbit is. So this diagram is drawn from a third person's perspective. Now I'm going to introduce two points x and y. So x is at distance n away and distance 1 away from the line joining AB. y is similarly defined, it's basically the mirror image of x across the line. Now why do I introduce these two points? Because consider the following two scenarios. First scenario, the rabbit decides to hop to x. So uh, it has n steps and each step it covers distance 1, so it's hopping along this line to x. And after each hop, the ping from the tracking device is the fit of perpendicular to L. So for example, it hops here, the ping happens here, it hops here, the ping happens here, and so on and so on until it hops here and the ping happens here. What I've just described is a possible scenario because it obeys the rules described by the problem. Now there can be a, there can be a second scenario where the rabbit decides to hop to y. So in this case, uh, again, we may hop 1, and then this, the pings this time are also the feet of perpendicular to L. So you hop a distance of 1, the ping is here, hop a distance of 1, ping is here, and so on, until it hops to here, and the ping is here. So under these two scenarios, what does the hunter see? The hunter sees the exact same sequence of pings. And together with whatever history comes before this particular moment, basically the hunter has one common set of pings that she observed, and she needs to use that to decide where to move to. So the whatever the two scenario is, the hunter's strategy, whatever that strategy is, will bring that hunter to only one location at the end of this n steps. And if the hunter ends up at H, well, both of these scenarios could be the true underlying play of the world. So the hunter could very well be HX from the rabbit or HY from the rabbit. So there is one scenario where the hunter ends up at the max of HX, HY from the rabbit. So what is the best uh, case scenario for the hunter? The best choice so let's take a look at where the where h can be right so firstly the hunter will cover a distance of n so it will be a circle of radius n centered at b so if it is at this point i claim that actually this minimizes the max of h x h y for any other h that the hunter ends up with it is only going to be worse there will be one scenario where the distance is even bigger than uh, hx over here. Okay, so you can very quickly check that this is indeed the mean of max hx hy. And from here, we can now bound what is the distance. So hx squared is simply this squared plus 1 squared. And this distance you can very quickly find out using Pythagoras theorem as well. n squared minus 1 squared square root of that then you subtract n minus d so this is that expression here so once you have this uh it's just basic algebra that i won't uh, go through to show that as long as n is bigger than or equal to 4d then hx square is bigger than d square plus half remember i made no assumption on what is the best strategy for the hunter if the hunter chooses some other strategy that ends up h being not this specific point then max of hx hy is going to be even larger. So 
this bypasses all the loopholes about arguing what is the best strategy for the hunter. Okay, so do take note of that. Now, with this claim, we are pretty much almost done. Let's see how we can use this claim. Now, first of all, we need to uh, make sure we are at least a distance one away first before we can apply the claim. But this is quite simple. Basically, after the first move, there is already a scenario where the hunter could be a distance greater than equal to one away from the rabbit. Basically, the rabbit hops in a random uh, direction and the ping from the tracking device could very well happen to be at the original point A0. So, no matter where the rabbit hops to, this ping over here is a rabbit, uh, is a valid uh, ping. So the hunter basically has no information, makes a move in a random direction, and that direction could very well be directly opposite from the rabbit. So in fact, there is even a scenario where the hunter is up to a distance of two already away from the rabbit. Now, now that we have this, we can let the claim apply. So what we do is after every n step, so let's say d currently is below uh, less than or equal to 100. Then after n greater than or equal to 40, we can even let n be uh, 400. So after 400 steps, the distance squared, there is a scenario where the distance squared is bigger than this uh, the distance square is bigger than d square plus half so basically the distance square has increased by at least half and so if i do this a total of two times hundred squared times then uh, my distance square will have increased to at least 101 uh, or sorry or rather uh one oh 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 one okay whatever yeah you, you get the point it's bigger than uh, 100 uh, the distance is strictly bigger than 100 so sorry for the typo here but the point is basically that this number here is less than 10 to the 9 so that is pretty much all we need to prove this problem yeah so if it comes as a surprise to you that this problem sounds relatively easy in fact this problem is not c7 c8 it is just a C5. Yeah, so it's quite shocking that a C5 resulted in only two people having perfect score. So what are the possible explanations for this? Well, some suspect that there was a tricky P2 on that day, which took away quite a bit of time from the contestants from solving the problem. Well, another hypothesis is that because the question is listed as a P3 and not C5, some contestants might have overthought, thinking that there must be some very tricky or deep strategy that the hunter can do to win the game. Or maybe they think that, you know, uh, they need to find a very crazy approach for the rabbit. Whatever it is, the tendency to overthink when it's listed as, C as P3 sounds like a possible explanation. Or maybe contestants are just generally weak in yes-no questions. So in recent years, we have seen a number of yes-no questions being sort of the, the main character of I, the, the IMO problems. Because if you guess wrongly, it really wastes a lot of your time. And we seem to be not practicing enough of these yes-no questions where we don't know the answer beforehand. So let us now take a look at the two contestants who actually solved the problem. So they are actually not from China nor USA. They are from Australia and Russian Federation. So you see over here, they have a pretty good score on day one. So as a contestant who sort of uh, leads the pack on day one, they must felt really sad that their day two didn't go as well. So in fact, uh, one of them got 700, thankfully still got a gold medal, but the other contestant did not even get problem for and ended up with a silver medal. So it must be really sad to know that you are one of the two contestants to solve problem 3 and yet 
you end up with a silver medal. So, well, that that is really sad. But regardless, it's still a great achievement that they managed to solve this problem under contest scenario. Yeah, so that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the problem a lot and stay tuned to the channel for more interesting math videos. I'll see you in the next one.